of reviews by this guy uh, i know it's been a while since my beautiful face has been in the screen at some point i will appear again but either way before we get into the topic of today i'd like to say don't forget to let me spend my money so you don't waste yours by hitting that subscribe button and if you're interested in seeing other things such as this on the we Dean channel don't forget to click that bell. As I said in the last video, the unboxing of this, there was going to be a review. This is the Retron 3 HD. And honestly, I'm kind of excited to have this in my collection. I'm kind of excited to test it out and review it. Now, I have had Retrons before. I had the original Retron HD. If you're interested in checking that video out, you can hit the card up at the top of the screen or check the link in the description down below after you finish watching this video in all its entirety. I've also had the Super Retron HD, which was the Super Nintendo, obviously. And you can also check that video up, card at the top of the screen, link in the description. But for now, we're taking a look at the Retron 3 HD and you might be, well, maybe not you, but I'd be asking myself the very question that was the title of this video. Why did I buy a Retron 3 HD? And the reason I'm asking that question is because both the Retron HD and the Super Retron HD, I both sold and passed along to somebody else. So why would I buy this if I got rid of those consoles? And we're going to get to the answer of that question towards the end of the video so don't forget to stick around if you're interested in finding out why why i bought it or why that is even a question but either way let's take a look at the retron 3 hd let's take a look at the consoles first and then we'll get to these controllers and then we'll also get to my gripe with hyperkin as far as those controllers are concerned let's look at the console itself as you can see i bought the translucent red addition it is not translucent around the whole console the bottom is gray personally i kind of like the look i mean although i know most people would probably rather the whole console translucent red i think there is a dark translucent gray one or black i'll leave confirming pictures up on the screen but either way it looks just like some of the past Retron consoles from Hyperkin, which I think that the Hyperkin design team have done a really good job on these consoles. I love the way they looked. I love the way the Super Retron HD and the regular Retron look. They got the signature Hyperkin carve out here with the light up Hyperkin logo. And as you can see, you have a reset button on the top, a power button. You have a switch here. And this switches through your different consoles for NES, Genesis, and Super NES. But it doesn't just play those three consoles. Apparently, this one also plays Famicom games, Mega Drive games, and your Super Famicom games. It also does PAL, which we'll get into in a minute. On the front here, you have your Super Nintendo control ports. I'm guessing they're... Assuming that you're going to play Super Nintendo more, I guess that's a fan favorite. And that's why they put it on the front. Uh, you also have your Genesis connectors on the side here for your original Genesis controllers. And we're going to get into testing those. Uh, the only annoyance about putting them on the sides here, which I know Hyperkin kind of had no choice with the size of this, is that you're going to have the controllers hanging out the side if you're not using the wireless RetroBit controllers, which I will be using it's probably going to pull at the console as you see on this side that is your original nes now someone in the comments on my instagram if you want to go ahead and check me out on instagram that is at we Dean channel and i'll leave it up on the screen they said they were a little worried about this having a death grip which some of these consoles do as you may have seen in my azoga chinese clone console video look at all this animal here hair hair 
Uh, this has a death grip on the cartridges and I'm pretty sure I either broke one of my games or the game was already broke because I didn't break this one. I went and bought this one. This has a death grip on here. I don't feel safe putting my cartridges in there. He said that some of the retro big consoles had a death grip on here. So we're going to go ahead and test that out. See how tight that is so I can answer his question. Let's go ahead to the back here. And as you can see, as always, these clone consoles have the AV out. Just in case you want to play this on your old CRT. You have an HDMI. And right here, right here is your aspect switch. You have your 16x9 and your 4x3, and you have your micro USB. I kind of wish these companies would start adopting C, and I know I'm not the only YouTuber that says that. Some of the bigger YouTubers have expressed that as well. On the bottom here, you have your NTSC and your PAL switch for your SNES games. And up top here, you have it for your NES. And down here, you have your PAL NTSC U and NTSC J that's for American and that's for Japanese so you have all three here for your Sega and Mega Drive that's it for stuff on the console itself it feels of a pretty sturdy plastic I always like to express that mine right here has a either a couple of scratches or a stress mark in it so that's kind of annoying getting that like that out the box not much of a big deal set that console aside here as once again i start voicing every step that i make in a video annoying either way here is your super nintendo controller that comes with this this is the scout controller i always like the design of the scout controller i used to have one i think it was either a usb or a regular nes connector i do want to get some wireless ones for my super nintendo classic at some point and they went with white and gray buttons here instead of your regular purple or your Famicom, Super Famicom colors. Controller feels pretty sturdy. It is lightweight. There's nothing much to it. It is a Super Nintendo controller. The D-pad feels pretty good. It is of a harder plastic. It does have, I don't know, not too much. There is a little bit of play in it. We'll have to see how that works during game testing. And you have rubber select and start, which I like. I don't like when they decide to go plastic on those. And these feel like the original buttons, honestly. Now, I don't have the original NES controllers, but I do have the ones for the Super Nintendo Classic, which are pretty much molded at the originals. So we will be using those to compare at a later time in this video. Okay, I lied. Why wait to some other point in the video? Here we go. We got my Super Nintendo Classic. I'm going to get the controller out the box and test it. And also in this video, I am going to end up putting my Super Nintendo Classic finally in this protective case that I got from AliExpress. If you guys are interested in a review of this case, which won't be that long, Please let me know in the comments down below. Maybe I'll do a little My Tiny Point of View video. Just let me know in the comments down below. All right, here we go, guys. This is pretty much the original Super Nintendo controller. It's just brand new and made for the SNES Classic. Uh, I've never taken one of these apart before, and I'm not entirely sure if these are tactile. This feels more like a harder membrane. There is a lot more play with this controller. It is, does feel a little tighter, the buttons. Same thing with the D-pad. I don't know, personally, I kind of like this a lot better. Some people might have a different opinion. I just feel like there's more response with this. I mean, not in gameplay, obviously, we're gonna test that. But I just feel more feedback is what I was going for. Everything is a lot more tighter. There's a lot more play. And you can actually feel the buttons going down. Now someone would say it takes a little more strength to push this down. Either way, it feels really good. I'm going to say I like the LNR better on the Super Nintendo though. controller. Now these top ones feel a little squishy on here compared to these. Now we got Sega Genesis controller and obviously I think I do have an original Sega Genesis controller because I do have a original Sega Genesis. 
but that's all put away so we're probably going to end up comparing it to my retro bit controllers which are officially a license and they use the original molds so we will compare that honestly from memory the d-pad feels pretty similar to the original controller start button that is plastic it is not rubber i can't remember if the original one was plastic or rubber now you can see that the designs on the controller like the a is i don't think that that's similar to the original it looks more like a triangle than an a that's b c x y and z that mode button feels really good overall the buttons all feel pretty good they do feel kind of similar to that super nintendo where they have a lot of play it's not exactly the same but they do feel like obviously membranes in there i yeah, this probably is a rubber membrane plastic is made of the same sturdy plastic that that is i think they kind of look good in red now let's get right off the bat to one of my gripes we're not going to be testing or comparing their hyperkin nes controller because this console didn't come with one for some odd reason hyperkin decided that we're going to throw a genesis controller in there and a Super Nintendo controller, but uh, we don't need an NES one. And for someone like me who would love to have a matching controller, uh, I'm crap out of luck. Or SOL, which is what I should have said. They didn't throw it in. Hopefully at some point, maybe Hyperkin decides that they're gonna fuck. They're gonna sell it separately. Who knows? Well, let's get into game testing. We're gonna test quite a few things. We're gonna test the controller ports, and then we're also gonna test each cartridge slot, which I unfortunately do not have any Super Famicom games. I have one Famicom game, but it's a bootleg, but we'll still test that out. We'll test that adapter that you will have seen or you would have seen in that Zoga video. And we're gonna test some Genesis games. We're gonna test some Genesis repros that I've got from China. See how those work. We're gonna test all the switches. Yeah, we're, we're gonna get into all that. And that was just a mouthful and I'm babbling again. Let's go. All right guys, I know I said there wasn't gonna be any more babbling, but I forgot to compare this Hyperkin Genesis controller to a somewhat original. Obviously, this is a retro bit controller, but it is officially licensed by Sega and uses the original Mose. I also have this old retro bit, older retro bit controller that I got a while back with the dual connectors, USB and the original Genesis. And it is a Street Fighter one. I've always liked this. I don't know if this is gonna work in there because I think I had tried this one in the Genesis Mini and it did not work. I can't remember. I know I tested it on something and it didn't work. But either way, here is this. And as you can see, this is a lot tighter and this is a lot looser. I mean, that, that does feel similar. As you can see, this is, I think, a little larger than this D-pad. And yes, the start button on here is plastic, so I'm guessing the original one was too. I always like the mode button on top here versus the one that's down here. I don't know, I just like it up top more. Yeah, and those are a lot tighter too. And as I can see, there are membranes in here too. It is not tactile switches. So it just seems like there's just a tighter grip or a longer press on these. I know I might not be explaining it well, but as you can see on here, obviously Hyperkin went with their own design for the button, because this is an actual A, and I knew that. I can't determine which one I like more. I just think they're both different and good in their own ways. And of course, more pre-scratches, yay! Which I guess because it's built by Retrobit. It's pretty similar to this one, so there's no need in going and explaining it. I will use it on on the Retron 3 HD just to see if it works because it'd be kind of cool to use this. I like this controller and it doesn't get much use. Let's get into testing the ports on here and I want to go into the NES first. Obviously, I don't have an original NES controller. Well, it's obvious to me, not you. 
stupid. But here I got the Retro Bit Ghouls, Ghost and Goblins controller here that I've done a review on in the past or used it in a test video. And we're going to go ahead and use that. It has the original connectors. And I also have this Retro Bit Dog Bone controller and that has the original connectors as well. Hopefully they are pretty similar to your original NES so I can answer that viewer's question. Uh, I don't remember his name, but I will throw that up on the screen. This obviously is not the original D-pad, but that's not going to matter for this. So let's go ahead. We have our NES connector on the side here. And that right there does indeed have a pretty harsh grip on it. I'm not going to lie. I mean, look, it's not coming out very easily. For some people, that might be something that they want. I mean, I've never, I don't know what console that act commoner actually was talking about. Maybe I have used it and I know what he's saying, but I mean, that is pretty tight in there. Let me see if test this one as well. That on the other hand, right there, this retro bit controller is not as tight. It's pretty loose. You see how easy it comes out. I think it all depends on the controller and I wish I had an original NES controller to see the difference knowing that this one is tighter than this one and as you can see that takes quite a bit of force to get that controller in there and these are the ones that came with the console which means it's going to take quite a bit of force to get it out and it takes a big pull to get off which means you're gonna have to hold this console in order to get it out and honestly this side is a lot tighter than the other side my advice to you if you do pick this up i know we haven't gone into reviewing it whether it's worth picking up i just get wireless 8-bit though controllers stick it in there leave it you can also pick the hyperkin scout controllers wireless ones up as well and it's not it's not a death grip on this side it comes out easily it goes in easy Let's go ahead and test out the Street Fighter controller. That on the other hand was a slightly bit tighter, but it doesn't take much force to take that out as well. All right, time for testing the uh, Retro 3 HD from Hyperkin with, well, games. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any Mega Drive games or Super Famicom, so that's kind of a letdown. I don't know, I might pick some up before I upload this video, but for now, let's get into testing. As you can see, I got all three controllers hooked up. I got the Super Nintendo. Uh, unfortunately, Hyperkin, for some odd reason, decided not to go with a translucent red one. So I got the RetroBit Dual Link cable hooked up. Hopefully that works because that, those controllers don't seem to always work with every system. And I got the Sega Genesis. Mega Drive controller hooked up. Uh, I will say, and I probably mentioned this before, this thing came pre-scratched and it seems like this surface easily gets scratched, so I'd be careful. I got a couple of scratches on it already. Uh, we got this game that I just recently picked up that I used to play as a child a lot. I have a lot of fond memories and that is Breakthrough. Uh, I think I paid 30 or 40 bucks for this, which is kind of upsetting because the box looks somewhat legit. But the cartridge itself doesn't have your normal, I forget what they are, screws that come in the NES. So I I want to slightly say that I think that that thing might be a reproduction, which is upsetting. Uh, I could always get a new cart, but I still paid more than I would have for a reproduction. And then we got Master Blasters here, which if you remember in the last uh, Chinese uh, NES Top Loader video, which will be up at the top of the screen and in the description, this game wouldn't play, and I thought that there were some missing pins here, but I've watched somebody else's video, and some of the pins are missing on that cart, too. I personally don't think that that's normal, but we're going to go ahead and try it in this system and see if it works. I don't know if this Hyperkin's going to play Super Famicom Reproductions. You dumb mother because a lot of clone systems don't seem to do it, but this one I heard is supposed to be more hardware emulation than uh, software emulation, so we'll see. I don't think I'm gonna need this adapter. The system's supposed to play it, so I would assume that I could just plug this in and it should work. 
If not, we have the adapter from my arcade, which was featured in the other video. This is definitely worth a pickup if you're looking to play Super Famicom games on a United States console or American console, whatever you want to say. I also got this hockey game from the last video too. We're going to go ahead and play that as well. As you can see, this one, I mean, you can't see, but in there, it's not missing the pins, so... I still think that that other game is busted, which I paid way too much for a busted game. And for the Genesis, we got a couple of reproductions, and that is Another World, which I don't ever remember that being ported to the Genesis. I'm pretty sure this is a newer game, and it'd be interesting to see what's actually on this cart. And we also got another game that I'm pretty sure never made it to the Genesis or ever got ported, which is on every system, and that's Cave Story. And of course, from Bitmap Bureau, we got Xeno Crisis. I did a video on unboxing this. I have not done a Wii Play, which I really need to. Uh, this game looks really good. I did do a video on a Chinese bootleg, which I do have that, and that thing was... It was just horrible quality, unlike this. So that's going to be in the mix. No more babbling. You're always babbling. Let's get into gameplay. Without anything in it, I mean, it's on NES. You power it on, and nothing comes up on the screen. As you possibly can see, the Hyperkin logo lights up just like any other Hyperkin clone console. And there is a, there's a LED light indicating which cartridge slot that you're on. I got the game in. I had to push down hard. Once again, these uh, consoles really need some strength to get the game in. Let me hit power and see what happens. Ah, Master Blasters works. I did not get hosed. I did not get hosed. So let's see if this retro bit controller works with the system. And no, we're not getting anything. Looks like I'm going to have to try another controller. The RetroVic controller does not work. If you guys like to see me test a couple of different Sega, SNES, and NES controllers on this system, I will do another video. Let me know in the comments down below. Let's go ahead and get another controller in because this isn't working. Oh, never mind. I had it in the wrong port. It was not. It was in uh, controller 2 instead of 1. controller is working, as you can see. I heard this, I, the reason I bought this game is because I heard it was notoriously hard, and I've never actually played it as a kid. Ah. Either way, so far the audio sounded pretty good, and the game's frame rate seems like it's doing pretty well. Oh god. <laughs> uh, it's been so long since i played this game, I miss it so much. I, as you can see, you can hit the aspect ratio switch on the back. That'll give you 4 by 3, which is the original aspect ratio. The game's playing good. There's no noticeable frame droppage. Uh, it's been a long time since I've played it. I mean, it, some of it looks like there's a little flickering, but I think that was part of the original. Like, see there? No, that's glitching. That's not supposed to happen. There is some glitching. Well, I could have sworn that it said it played all of them, but I might be wrong. It might just play uh, Super Famicom games and uh, Mega Drive games and PAL version of those games. So you will still need an adapter like this, the My Arcade adapter. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in. And just for the sake of playing a Famicom game on this Hyperkin Retron 3 HD... There will be a link in the description down below to this. I don't know if they're still selling it. More than likely they will be. And that just goes in your regular NES slot like that. That one was kind of a tight fit. So if you want to play Famicom games, you can just get this adapter. It will work on the Hyperkin Retron HD. We're getting something here. Virgin Games. Did this game actually come out for the Genesis back in the day? Oh, of course I got the NES controller. I don't know, these 
these Hyperkin Genesis controllers kind of, they feel a little uncomfortable in the hands for me. That, as Mad Little Pixels would call the butt on the back, uh, it's kind of way too far out there. Yeah, that flickering is really noticeable up at the top there. It's actually bothering me the whole time I'm doing nothing but looking at that flickering at the top there. That might just be the Retron HD having a hard time playing the bootleg. Well, the game's playing, but that flickering, I just can't get over it. I keep staring up there. I'm probably going to die because I don't really know how to... Ah, oh, great. I don't know how to play this game, and now I died. Oh shit. I don't, you probably didn't see that, but I don't like the way these games are going into the, the slot on the Genesis. It seems like I had to push the cart to the side and then slowly push down like that until it went in. It will not go straight down. Now obviously this is a reproduction, so once again that might be the issue. Now, that's kind of cool to play Cave Story on the Genesis. It's playing, I don't know, I, I don't notice any frame rate issues. The sound quality sounds pretty good to me. I got that cart from AliExpress. Finally got a gun! Uh, the Hyperkin Retron 3 HD, it plays reproduction carts, so that is a plus. Here's Xeno Crisis from Bitmap. Not an original Genesis game, but a pretty high quality re... Well, high quality new Genesis game. It's almost like I gotta push down to the side here and then get the other part in, but it slams in pretty hard. I don't like that. You can pick between two Marines, kinda reminds me of Resident Evil. The game itself reminds me of Alien Syndrome, which was a favorite of mine back in the day on the NES. Looks like it shoots automatically. I'm going this way, it's not shooting, but if I move to the left, it shoots. If I move back, it shoots. I don't know, I'm not entirely sure I like what it's doing there. It's not shooting at all now. Am I out of, oh, I'm out of bullets, that's why. I wonder if that's how it plays on other systems like the Nintendo Switch. Like, it's wasting my bullets. Ah, I'm kind of disappointed. None of the six top buttons do anything. That's shooting. That's shooting. That's not. But then I shoot this way, so I kind of got to remember which direction each of these buttons are shooting in, which is going to be a pain. All right, next up on the Super Nintendo, that is, this isn't an original Super Nintendo cart. This is a brand new, well, it's not brand new, it's been a while, around for a while, but it's from Collector Vision and Entertainment Games. It's Sydney Hunter and the Caverns of Death. Now, if anybody has ever seen Gangster 81, I believe it's 81, he's the reason I always wanted to get into YouTube for gaming. He's sadly underrated in my opinion. He had a part in making this game. Oh, I already died. I hit the spikes on the top. And as you can see, there's hidden parts. And God, this is hard, man. You don't have, oh, you got, I got a boomerang. I didn't even notice that. That's supposed to, yeah, that's supposed to just jump. Alright guys, here's an original Nintendo cart. This is Super Star Wars. Audio still sounds pretty good to me. I mean, if you guys happen to notice anything that sounds off, let us know in the comments down below. 
game seems to be playing pretty good. I don't notice any frame rate issues. I feel like I'm playing it on an original Super Nintendo. I don't see any flickering at the top of the screen, so that's a plus. Alright guys, final thoughts. Uh, overall, I mean, uh, it's an okay, it's an okay system. I love the way it looks. I always loved Hyperkin's design. Uh, the Super Nintendo cart goes in there perfectly fine. It does, you don't have to push too hard. It slides right in there. The NES cart does give you a little bit of trouble depending on the direction you're putting it in. You just have to watch and it will slide in pretty easily and it, the, both carts do come out without having to ha pull it out. It does not have a death grip on it. That Genesis cartridge slot is a different story you got to kind of push down really hard sometimes push to the side uh as you can see you saw me being annoyed by the controls in xeno crisis you can change them so at some point i will do that and probably get a better gaming experience out of that i didn't see it uh the nes uh Ports on the side has a death grips and so does the super nintendo so you really have to pull hard to get them out so that's frustrating other than that the as you can see the hardware emulation the gameplay is spot on i mean uh, honestly m nobody's really going to notice any really bad frame rate issues except for the genesis it was flickering on that one game that uh, another world but uh that's a reproduction so it could be the card itself and you know clone consoles have a hard time playing reproductions as it is before i ended this video i had to do it i got an original genesis cart that's spider-man there on the genesis versus kingpin and it's still slightly hard to push the cart in you have to do it at an angle and then push down this cart doesn't have the notches here the ones that do have the notch you have to kind of push it up the same way leaning the cart and when it leans this way or this way the notches will get stuck on the edge of the system here there's a little more room on this side than there is on this side so when you go to pull it up it gets stuck there at some point that's gonna break that's a pretty big letdown and a pretty big flaw there uh, I don't like when consoles have death grips and you have to push down hard because at some point it, it's gonna ruin the uh, pins on there it's gonna ruin the consoles cartridge slot uh, it's kind of annoying but either way I know I'm babbling, we're already on 34 minutes, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna have to do some serious editing. If you have any questions on the Hyperkin Retron 3 HD, please let me know in the comments down below, I'll get to you as soon as possible. If you liked what was contained in this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. If you thought this video just plain sucked, there's always that down, that thumbs down button as well. If you found this video to be of some sort of value, do consider sharing amongst friends and the rest of your social media. And as always, don't forget to let me spend my money so you don't waste yours by hitting that subscribe button. The screen's black now.